this case is an 86 year old male who underwent endoscopic submucosal dissection for a well differentiated intramucosal carcinoma with negative deep margins and negative lymphovascular invasion in 2020. Subsequent EMR was performed for a second intramucosal carcinoma later that year. He had C3, M6, residual Barrett's and underwent several sessions of radiofrequency ablation with limited response, thought to be due to ongoing acid exposure from a large hiatus hernia. He was offered fundoplication but declined to undergo surgery. His remaining Barrett's esophagus has not revealed endoscopic evidence of dysplasia but is considered refractory to radiofrequency ablation. He presents today for endoscopic assessment and treatment. We now turn you over to Dr. Neuhaus and Dr. Sharma. So uh, you heard about uh, the history of this patient and uh, I'm using the Pentax therapeutic uh, gastroscope with a 3.8 millimeter channel. And uh, when you show now the endoscopic image, I already marked, uh, I will explain why, the proximal margins uh, of these Barrett's tongues here with uh, APC. And uh, we see here from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock the squamous cell scar after ESD and another scar after EMR. So this is a C5 M6 Barrett's. So I'm now approaching the Z line. And I think Pratik already explained how to characterize the Z line at the upper edges of the gastric folds. And I also marked them with APC. And now you can see the very large hernia of six centimeter. There is no suspicion of any focal lesions and random biopsies have been taken. So there is no more dysplasia. But of course, the residual Barrett's means that he has a risk of uh, neoplastic recurrence of 30 to 30% within the next couple of years. And uh, RFA failed. Uh, and now uh, we offered the patient uh, to undergo cryo-balloon ablation. Uh, we have limited data uh, on the application of this technique in failures after RFA, but at least it's a good chance for him and it's a safe technique. And now I would like to show you how it's done. So the system comes uh, with a specially designed balloon and within the balloon uh, we have a diffuser with a nozzle to which we uh, will spray nitric oxide onto the outer uh, part of the balloon so that the balloon is a low pressure, high, very high compliant balloon, which nicely confines to the esophageal wall. And therefore the nitric oxide cools the balloon side and the mucosa, freezing the mucosa within eight seconds. So we did uh, comparative studies showing that eight seconds is obviously enough for achieving ablation without a relative uh, a high risk of stricture formation. Ongoing acid reflux uh, will be an issue in this patient in the long run too. For sure. Okay. And do you always perform uh, pH metry and uh, impedance before you consider surgery? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, before surgery, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, okay. you want to document that and okay. uh, show that. Okay. So now you see the diffuser um, at the distal end of this in, in a, uh, inner diffuser of uh, this metal string. And the opening, the nozzle, is um, at 1 o'clock. And I do a short test application. Hmm. Yeah, yep. it could go a little bit deeper. Okay. Yeah, okay, this is a good position. And then now you see that we're exactly at the Z line. And I press, this was eight seconds. And now I switch to the rotation mode. Now it's rotating, as you can see. Short test bird. Yes. Continue with rotation, as you can see here. 
a little bit too much. And horse, you pretty much go through all the quadrants. So I mean, is yeah. it a good idea? So do you, can you do twelve, three, six, and nine, something like yeah, that, yeah, and that will get you exactly. there? Exactly. Yeah. It's very important that the patient is in a, is deeply sedated. So now I get it here. So I watch the markers on the catheter. Always eight seconds. So I get the diffuser to a 12 o'clock position, even more. There is still a small part left at 6 o'clock. So Yeah. Okay. So this is, as I said, distance of two centimeter, two square centimeters. And now I'm pushing the mode and getting, moving the diffuser now forward towards me, as you can see here. Now, can you see that? Yep. Nicely done. Yep. Okay. Mm. And we have not to ablate here this scar, huh? right? So we're rotating. So as you can see, I don't ablate the scar. This may be an advantage also reducing the risk of stricture formation. So according also to trials from Mimi Kanto uh, and also of our first experience, the success rate of complete eradication of neoplasia is um, 96% and of remaining Barrett's 83%. First, how does post-procedural symptoms from cryo compare to radiofrequency ablation? Yeah, maybe a little bit less uh, pain. Okay. Uh, but again, we have no. We have to be fair. There is no direct comparison.